Now let's take a look at the fourth class of drugs. We're going to skip the third one. It isn't relevant to the cat. Um, and that's the sodium glucose cotransporter 2 uh, inhibitors. So basically it's been known that um, for a long time that uh, if you can induce the excretion of glucose into the urine, you can also help to ameliorate hyperglycemia. And that's basically the strategy of these drugs um, to also to reduce the tendency for glucose to be toxic. Uh, and that glucose toxicity is a negative impact on the beta cells themselves. Um, in addition, um, the, these drugs can uh, lead to reduced glucose production by the liver. Uh, although that's a secondary effect. So this is a, a graphic of the renal proximal tubules and the early segments of the uh, proximal tubules uh, include the location of where 90% of glucose is reabsorbed uh, in, in the kidney. And this, these are the S1 and S2 segments. And the transporter, the sodium glucose transporter, uh, which has a similar uh, function as it does in the intestine, except in this case, it's trying to lead to the, uh, the presence of sodium is co-transported with glucose to lead to the law or exchange with glucose um, to lead to loss of glucose in the urine. And so this uh, is where, like I said, 90% of glucose is normally reabsorbed. So if you can block some of this reabsorption, um, you are helping to reduce glucose in the bloodstream. So to show the similarity between what goes on in, in the intestine and the enterocyte and in the S1 segment of the proximal renal tubule, um, we have similar transporters. The one that's uh, in the intestine is called SGLT1, and the one that's a target of these classes of drugs for diabetes is SGLT2. So let's take a look at this. Uh, basically, in both cases, sodium uh, is co-transported with glucose uh, from the lumen into the cell and then um, out into the uh, into the blood. So um, the reabsorption process of glucose uh, evolves the, the SGLT2 transporter and what's called the GLUT2 transporter from inside the renal tubule to the blood. This is all driven, so the, the driven by the sodium potassium ATPase, so that's the energy dependent part that creates a gradient, an appropriate gradient of sodium across from the lumen to the blood, the blood to the lumen, blood being higher than the lumen. So um, this process, uh, when this, this is blocked, uh, you end up leaving more glucose in the lumen, and that would lead to loss in the urine. So one of the early drugs that was studied, uh, and this was in humans, uh, it compared, they wanted to compare the change in fasting glucose uh, that occurred. Um, this is a placebo in various drug dose, uh, SGLT2 inhibitor dosages. You can see the, the tendency for uh, reduction of fasting glucose compared to sort of the standard drug, which is metformin. How it's doing this is by the mechanism that I mentioned before. So any drug that you see that ends with G-L-I-F-O-Z-I-N, uh, as we talk about it going forward, you'll hopefully know, is one of these SGLT2 inhibitors. Now, this, this slide is a little busy. I, I apologize for that. But I think um, I wanted to list it because it's the most, uh, at this point, uh, most carefully done study of an SGLT2 inhibitor. And it was done, obviously, in experimental cats. And the drug velagliflozin. Um, was studied, and this was a publication in JVPT. Basically, two groups of uh, neutered cats were given the placebo or the drug for 35 days, and a number of uh, things were looked at, fructosamine, beta-hydroxybutyrate, 
will point out the importance of that uh, and uh, NIFA's non-esterified fatty acids because of the tendency for these drugs to stimulate ketogenesis. Glucagon, adiponectin, leptin were measured, as well as uh, urine water intake, urinary electrolytes, glucose, and volume. Also, and this is important, indirect calorimetry was performed in an IV glucose tolerance was performed as well as an insulin tolerance test. So an insulin tolerance test would be important to know uh, about, uh, to, to look at the uh, insulin sensitivity factor. Whereas a glucose tolerance test tends to look at insulin secretion. Uh, all cats tolerated this drug well. M one of the most important things to note here is a re reduced respiratory exchange ratio, indicating the alteration of metabolism. Uh, as well as an increase in cholesterol, rise in beta-hydroxybutyrate and non-esterified fatty acids. Glucose clearance was unaltered, but less insulin was secreted to achieve that uh, during an IV glucose tolerance test, which suggested improved insulin sensitivity. And this is all by just improving glucose loss through the kidney. No effect on uh, glucagon, leptin, leptin, or added diponectin. And overall water intake, as you'd expect, urine output, urinary glucose excretion, and the glucose creatinine ratio were higher because that's the primary effect of this drug. So this was a showed some promise with regards to this class of drugs in cats back in 2018. And now a new drug has been approved by another company. Um, making this drug uh, the first appro FDA approved oral drug for cats, Bexacat. And after try struggling with the names of um Bexacat is nice to be able to say as a trade name. Basically, this is a, uh, were two, the results of two six month field studies and an extended use study that showed uh, over 80% effectiveness in improving glycemic control. And they recommend more or less as a result of the, this trial, as well as experimental studies, to screen for kidney, liver, and pancreatic disease, as well as pre-ketoacidosis. Um, this is not a drug that should be used with cats who have been previously treated with insulin or are currently receiving insulin or who have insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. It's for the non-insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. Uh, or equivalent of type 2 diabetes in the cat. Uh, cats should be in good condition when they're started on this. And the major adverse effects were, um, let's start with euglycemic ketoacidosis. So I'm sorry, diabetic should be not there, uh, but that was taken directly from the, from the insert. It should be euglycemic uh, ketone bodies present. Um, and certainly the potential, although less, would be for the actual induction of diabetic ketoacidosis where the animal's glucose would go up. Now, the other rub here is that apparently the cost to the veterinarian would be about $50 per cat per month. So if you put a multiplier of two or three on it, you can see what this might call, uh, cost an owner to manage a cat with this drug. But um, again, uh, it's for a cat who perhaps is caught early um, in the development of diabetes.